All right, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Advancements in Load Center Technologies and GFCI Circuit Breakers with Leviton. I'm your host, Timothy Johnson. I'm the digital editor for Electrical Contractor Magazine. Before we get started, I need to go over some housekeeping items. Uh, the audio for today's presentation should be coming through your computer speakers or headphones. If you prefer to call in, there's a toll-free number in the event info panel. If you have other difficulties, please feel free to reach out to me using the chat window or the Q&A box in the bottom right hand of your screen. Also, please note that today's presentation is being recorded, so if you miss anything or something comes up and you have to leave, you can come back at your convenience. Finally, there will be time for Q&A after the presentation, so you can submit your questions through the Q&A box or comments in the chat box at any time. If you're having trouble finding those features, hover your mouse at the top of your screen in case we're in full screen mode. Uh, a control panel will drop down, and you should see those options there. Uh, now, on with the show. Our presenter today is Justin Berghoff, Director of Business Development and Product Management at Leviton. Justin is responsible for providing vision, direction, and customer focus in developing new business and market development opportunities for Leviton's residential business unit. He joined Leviton in 2014 from Innovolt, an electronics technology startup in Atlanta, where he built out the team responsible for developing and executing the technology roadmap from the ground up. Prior to that, he spent over 12 years with Siemens in the U.S. and Germany in R&D, project management, and product management capacities focused on electrical power distribution products. So on behalf of Electrical Contractor Magazine, I just want to thank everyone for attending. Now I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Justin Berghoff to get started. Justin? Wonderful. Thank you, Tim. Uh, so welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining today. I know we're very busy, and I hope you find this quick presentation valuable. I will uh, do my best to maintain the hour of time allotted. Uh, that would be including some, some time for questions, certainly. So again, my name is Justin Berghoff. I've been working in the industry about 18 years in many roles. So uh, today I'm going to working. Aha. So today I'm going to talk to you about load centers and specifically we'll start with a quick look at the history of overcurrent protection in residential applications and then I'm going to address some real world problems that have existed for years and, and really what's being done to bring these mature products up to the state of the art is what I would say. So again, as Tim said, you can submit your questions uh, using the, the, the feature on the the WebEx. Great. So, history of residential overcurrent protection. I think many folks know in the beginning it was basically fuses, uh, 120 volt, 30 amp fuse holder. Not much power is being needed or used at that time. And actually in the 30s, we saw the first breakers. Um, I believe Westinghouse was the first person company launch breakers, uh, but even up until then, through the 40s, uh, then we saw 240 volt AC power, 60 amps, still in the form of a fuse. And it really wasn't until the 60s when I would say the circuit breakers with load centers really became the standard throughout the country in residential installation. So at that point, you know, you just had basic circuit breaker with overcurrent protection overload as well as short circuit. Uh, then at the very end of that decade is when we saw the advent of the GFCI, the ground fault circuit interrupter. Uh, and that, those came out, I think the first time in the code was with the swimming pool lighting was the, the first, uh, say, incantation of that. And then it, it spread as time went on. And, and there's really good data to show how GFCIs have, in fact, protected against the electrocutions. Uh, and then I, I would say between the 60s until the 2000s, the, there really wasn't a lot of innovation when it came to load centers. Uh, there were incremental things that happened, but I would say nothing particularly groundbreaking. Uh, then in 2000s, in the early 2000s, actually in the, the 99 code, I believe, uh, we saw the introduction of the arc fault circuit interrupter, uh, which Again, added to another layer of fault protection on top of the ground fault. There was a need that was seen. Um, in 2012, 
came the plug-on neutral design, which was certainly helpful because when you have a GFCI and you have an AFCI, you, you need to certainly bring the neutral back through the breaker itself, the branch, so it can monitor these little variations in current by circuit. And then in 2014, uh, we saw the dual function AFCI GFCI circuit breaker. This was to serve a need. Uh, specifically in the code that year, we saw uh, AFCIs spread into kitchens and laundry rooms. So that's what that product served the need. And that's really, I'd say, the last things to happen in a major in innovation for load centers. Okay, so, so now, like I said, I want to address some, some real-world problems, so that be them obvious problems or sometimes unmet needs that have existed for a long time, and, and really what's being done to bring these very mature products up to the state of the art. So GFCIs, so obviously, as I mentioned, the, the primary thing is to protect, protect homeowners from electric shock. And this is the personnel type of GFCI uh, dictated by the, the U.S. standard states. Anything above 5 milliamps uh, going to ground in the circuit breaker or receptacle must trip. Uh, these include electronics and other sensitive components to sense that very low level. So the problem that I'll state, the problem statement is that there are thousands of GFCIs installed today that are no longer providing ground fault protection. The reason being is the vast majority of these are installed today are receptacles, actually. You can imagine that any electronic device that's continuing this be powered and installed for like 25 years a lot of times in a home could be compromised. In fact, a study was done by IAEI um, in the early part of the 2000s to really confirm this. So depending on your location, uh, they found up to 50% of installed GFCIs were no longer providing ground fault protection. You think, wow, uh, that seems pretty high, but what areas do you think were the worst uh, in the in the Midwestern prairie states, as well as Tampa, Florida, which is, I think, known as the lightning capital of the world. So what happens is over time, all these electronics will fail. Um, imagine it, it's installed for that line, long time and continuously powered. And the failure of these electronics will lose the ability to protect against ground fault. And that's really called end of life. So the circuit breaker would then just act as a regular breaker and not have any ground fault protection. Um, same as a receptacle, it would just be a plain receptacle. So the current UL standard now requires UL circuit breakers with GFCI technology to respond to what UL has identified as seven failure modes. And there's a multitude of these failure modes. I won't jump into detail, but it's important to understand this because even if one of these seven failures occur, GFCI protection would be lost. So previously, only GFCI receptacles were required to respond to all seven of these events. GFCI breakers were granted ex exceptions to two of them and requiring them only to respond to five. So because of these exceptions, it was possible for a GFCI breaker actually to be reset after protection had been lost and continue to provide unprotected ground fault protection without indicating this to the end user. So this gap actually protection has been identified and closed and uh, now all manufacturers will need to, to meet this updated standard over about three years is the amount of time. So right now, Leviton is really the only company to meet this updated standard. AFCI tape type breakers um, were launched, as I said, really into the early part of the 2000s. The real problem that was identified is many fires have emanated not only from overloads and short circuits, but also very low current arcs in wiring. Uh, in our experience, the most common type of arcing actually does come from uh, extension cords, although they, they can be generated from many, many places. 
Okay, so next, there's another issue that's come up. As we've seen the advent of the ground fault and arc fault breaker, now residential breakers provide protection against a multitude of things. Ground fault, ground fault self-test, which came when this ground fault um, devices and breakers started to require self-test auto monitoring. You could have a series arc fault, you could have a parallel arc fault in addition to normal breaker protection. So I'm sure many of you on the line now are electricians and sometimes when you get to a site, it can be difficult to troubleshoot. So how do you do it today? First, you might have to feel around for the trip breaker, at least a homeowner does. You would reset, turn it on, right? If it trips immediately, you, you probably, there's a few things that may have happened, you know, be it a short or um, some of these faults. So a lot of times now, you would have to hold down the test button, turn it back on. Um, and different manufacturers have different types of ways to, to show you what has happened. Uh, but like your car, wouldn't it just be helpful if the device could tell, tell you what's wrong? So what Leviton has done is has leveraged some of the newest technologies in troubleshooting tripped breakers. Uh, we've added a, a basic color indicator in the handle, so you can get quick operational status, operational status at a glance. Uh, green, red, white. Um, there's also, we're using backlit LEDs to show arc fault, ground fault in a much more intuitive way. Uh, and what's really interesting here is that you do not have to reset your breaker and turn it back on to a potentially hazardous situation, which seems counterintuitive. The reason why this works this way is because we, in integrating our self-test reset lockout, like I just talked to you at the end of life, um, what we did is we integrated line-side powered electronics. So that means even your, when your breaker is off or tripped and the contacts are open, the electronics inside of that ground fault or arc fault breaker are still awake and know what's happening on the line. So if your breaker trips, it knows it tripped on an arc fault and it can, the LED can stay lit up. Similarly, that's why uh, Leviton's ground fault breakers cannot be reset because it's doing a self-test even when the breaker's contacts are open. And last, we have a door with an observation window. So this has to do with the, the timid homeowner who don't even like to have to open their door. So if they're on the phone with an electrician, they can tell you what they see exactly. So when you get to the site, you're prepared. Another problem, I'm sure most of uh, the folks on the, the line understand very well, is finding and keeping good people. So in order to provide value added, uh, features, manufacturers are looking for ways to streamline installation. So an example of this, like I said earlier, was the plug-on neutral, which removed the need for pigtails. So most of us know, specifically in a new construction, that what happens at rough in and then it trim out. So rough in, you'll, you'll pull your wires and, you know, you'll probably terminate uh, your grounds and maybe some neutrals if you, if you have them. and not arc fault or ground fault breakers. Certainly with our AFCIs and GFCIs, there's, there's a few options. Uh, some people may still be using pigtails, and then many times you, people have switched over to the plug-on neutral version. So what we saw, Leviton's new wiring system really allows the electrician to completely terminate all branches up to 60 amps without the need for any breakers to be there. So in new construction, this means that when the electrician returns to trim, he has to only really install the breakers. So contractors all over the US and Canada have actually provided wonderful feedback about this time-saving feature. Uh, one owner told us that his trim out guys are usually a little more experienced and expensive to him and that they can really focus on areas that the homeowner will really see immediately uh, rather than something that's hidden behind a door. A 
again, another problem we've identified is the old battleship gray and door circuit breaker panels are often located in open areas where people are doing all kinds of stuff to cover them up. Um, not always the recommended thing. Uh, certainly, you can uh, do many things. If you just Google on the internet, you can certainly see all these different ideas about how to cover your breaker panel. Certainly, some people do a better job than others. Um, another thing we heard actually about load centers was general approachability. Uh, there's a lot of folks out there that are just basically terrified of the circuit breaker panel. So when we were developing this product, we did a lot of primary research in the field, and we took into account multiple influencers in the value chain, and it was clearly stated that aesthetics should be considered when developing a new panel and breakers. Uh, this message especially resonated with uh, real estate developers and architects who do provide input, especially in a lot of multi-dwelling things nowadays. Uh, and even many electricians agree it's important, uh, especially those that have unique installations where putting them in visible living areas is, is unavoidable. Um, I talked to a guy just the other day who likes them because they, he has to do raised homes along the beach where there's really no, no option, at least in, as far as his installation practices go. Um, another thing is our door, our basic door with no window is actually powder coated, and that enables paint to adhere much better than I'd say traditional uh, big enamel, glossier kind of load centers. And lastly, we added this optional window for those folks that are, again, completely terrified of the breaker panel. Um, and they have the capability to, to call the electrician to report and explain exactly what the fault condition is without even having to open the door at all. Again, so we think we've taken into account a lot of these problems that are real and tried to solve them to create a more modern and contemporary load center that really brings this product that has been around for well, I guess you can see the first one in 1930, not really the standard until the 60s, but really brought it up to the state of the art as we think it should be, as many other products have gotten more and more advanced and innovative over time. We've spent a lot of time to do this with the Leviton Load Center. So thank you for your time. I know we went pretty quick. Is there any questions out there, Tim? Um, yeah, we've got a few. Um, I just want to thank you, Justin. Uh, it's interesting to see the history of load centers and GFCIs um, and what you guys are, are doing to, to move things forward. Um, I think it's going to be a great presentation for everybody. Um, so, yeah, as Justin said, we're going to open the floor to discussion, comments, and questions. Um, thanks to you guys who have already submitted your questions. Um, if you have any more, please submit them in the Q&A &A box. It's in the bottom right hand of your screen. Um, or you can use the chat box and shoot me a message directly. Um, so the first question is, um, are the circuit breakers really all plug-on, and how does this panel wire? Uh, yeah, yeah. So up to 60 amps, uh, I'll get a little detailed, so up to 4 gauge for copper, uh, you can wire directly to special. These are custom terminals in the panel, um, and then you simply can – you wire the, those special terminals, and then when it comes time to it, you plug the breaker in. I'd say, you know, it's 100% plug on. There is no wiring whatsoever to the circuit breaker. Uh, we do offer two pole circuit breakers up to 125 amps, however. So as you can imagine, we, we, won't, we don't have the, this amount of space. So any breakers uh, above 60 through 125, you, we still have lugs, and you would wire to them the traditional way as the normal circuit breaker. Gotcha. Um, so uh, a couple of, a couple of people are asking where they can get these these products. Okay. Yeah. So they they are new to the market, um, obviously. But I think most of the, especially the electrical contractors on the line, are aware of of you know, certain, certainly they can go to their supply house and ask the question. 
uh, or you can go through the Leviton website and just basically say, I'd like some more information about it. So I would say go ahead and if you know any Leviton folks, Leviton Supply Houses, go there first or uh, submit to our website and uh, somebody will get in touch with you. Perfect. Um, where do you locate the panel schedule on the see-through? Yeah, that's a, that's certainly come up many, many times. Uh, the schedule that you actually put it, there's a schedule, we, we ship it with the panel. It's basically a strip that goes down the middle. Um, and we've, we found that actually that we've, we've had many installations already. And uh, there's enough room so that the, you can either write or a lot of folks are using uh, their own label printers and they've been able to do it and it's been uh, fine. Um, and approved by inspectors. Gotcha. Um, what about remote connectivity of this load center? Uh, as of now, we, we don't have, it does not offer remote connectivity. Certainly as time goes forward, Leviton's always looking at ways to innovate and foresees this as, as certainly becoming uh, something that could be seen in the future. But as of today, it's a, it's a regular, I'd say, non-communicating load center. Gotcha. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, are there breakers lar larger than 60 amp, um, or can they be used in this panel? Yeah, so I, I think I touched on it right now. So yeah, it goes from, All right. uh, uh, yeah, up to 125 in a two-pole branch. Gotcha. Sorry, we're actually getting quite a, quite a few questions, so it's getting a little difficult to track. <laughs> um, but that's yeah. a good thing. Um, let's see here. Would you recommend this panel protected by a whole home SPD? Yeah, we we usually do. I mean, we we certainly recommend surge. Um, there there should always be considered when you're doing any load center installation, and Leviton does offer those. Uh, we don't offer them in the breaker format, but we do offer surge in, in many, I'd say, versions for all the way from the meter type to the panel that would mount right next to the load center. That's what I personally use. Let's see, all right. Uh, one of the largest uses for GFCIs in my industry is for variable speed pumps and inductive loads which causes nuisance tripping on GFCIs and many manufacturers. How do you deal with this problem or do you or do you not have GFCI breakers? That's the question, but I think you covered that. Yeah, we do have those and, and I concur. We do hear this in the field. In fact, there are studies doing being done or discussions and work groups happening at the NEMA level. So so this includes all manufacturers of GFCIs and even AFCIs. Certainly we're aware of that. Um, a lot of these newer appliances are using some of these variable frequencies and, and have a tendency to uh, create noise on the line. So in conjunction with uh, the AHAM, it's the uh, appliance group, uh, American appliance, something like that, home appliances manufacturers or something, but uh, trying to work together to come up with better solutions um, instead of creating a, a, just a finger pointing um, challenge today. So um, things are certainly happening because we're well aware of it as a manufacturer, especially of, of GFCI receptacles. So work is being done in that area. So I would expect something to be happening in the next um, you know, six months to a year that really tries to address it either within product testing so, you know, you have to test your breakers at, at, or the receptacles at different frequencies, but I can't tell at the time how it's going to look. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, do you guys have an expectancy, uh, a life expectancy of the, the, the GFCI and AFCI breakers? No, uh, that one comes up too when you say, okay, end of life. But again, like I said, um, what would happen is we we see most of the of the we found most of the failed GFCIs in areas with higher amounts of lightning. Um, we do there are things that are happening to to add a, a, I'd say robustness to the product itself, which is 
An example is uh, MOVs. There are things that are used actually in surge protectors to, pr to protect, protect against that, um, which are being which have been implemented in GFCIs. But that said, we we still see these things because you can only do so much with that. So it's just a challenge when you you have something that's installed and it's it's basically constantly continuously connected. So there's no true life expectancy that I can offer. Okay. Um, let's see. Can the panel be surface mounted? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So the indoors can be in surface and flush. Yep. Perfect. Uh, I got a couple of questions about how this would work with um, solar installations with uh, photovoltaics. And okay. uh, the panel boards use backfeed breakers. Is there a solution for that at this time? or? Um, yeah, we're specifically, yeah, it's okay. You can backfeed our, our two-pole breakers and feed in solar power. We're doing that now uh, already. We've got installations in much of the southwest that um, are doing that. Uh, and then there's specific designs in California um, that has to do with when you, you have UL requirements, you've got NEC requirements, you've got uh, USERC, which is basically a consortium of utilities that dictates some requirements for installations. And then you also have Title 24. And I'm sure some folks have read in the news that in 2020, California is requiring solar on all new construction. So yeah, manufacturers are certainly doing things to address that. Leviton's in, in the process of doing that as well. We don't have what's called the solar ready version uh, available as of today but it's certainly on our roadmap. Great. Um, getting some questions about safeguards um, against plugging the wrong breakers in, a, for example, a 20-amp breaker onto a 15-amp pre-wired circuit. Right, so that's, that, that is something that's come, that has come up in the past. Uh, we recommend that just that the contractor, similar to, to labeling it, um, as they do today on an installation, would do that um, with the, the Leviton type of panel. Uh, when it comes to the homeowner coming back and doing a DIY, um, our panel really is no different than anybody else's that could potentially have uh, something like that happen. Gotcha. Um, yeah, one of our uh, audience uh, members, I guess, picked up on your uh, mention of an indoor version. Is there an outdoor version or is that coming? Yeah, we, we currently have, um, it's actually four, we're about to um, announce two additions. So we have really indoor panels, um, outdoor panels, 3R rated outdoor panels. Those are gray actually going to be outside next to, to meter sockets and conduit and stuff like that sometimes. So uh, outdoor and then we're going to be, and we have a meter main version um, which is, you know, it's got a meter socket and eight, eight circuits uh, and feed through lugs to go to a sub panel. We've got that and we're launching, you know, literally in the next few weeks here, a version that is MAG approved. So that's meter equipment group, which is used in throughout the Southeast. So we're going to have a version available for that area as well as we're just about to launch or announce a, um, a USERC uh, which is the side-by-side -side, uh, surface mount panel. Um, you'll, you'll see that a lot in the Southwest. So yes, the answer is yes. Great. Um, this one's kind of specific uh, to the internal uh, components. Is the bus copper or aluminum? The bus is copper, all copper. Cool. Uh, Oh, this one's kind of specific too. Uh, will a meter main version be available in white and with the window? No. <laughs> no on the window <laughs> part, and and because uh, then you you got you got specific tests you got to pass um, when it gets to, to to outdoor stuff. So 3R, you've got like a rain test and a lot of other things, um, and it, it's not available in white, but that that's a relatively easier one to to do. But um, as of today, it's not. Okay, great. Let's see. 
Uh, can the GF or AF breaker be reset with a fault indicated? If not, is there a bypass method? Can it be reset with a fault indicated? Um, you can reset and turn it on, but you'll just get another trip, I guess. I don't know. I'm not sure of the question. Uh, so there's no way to, to buy set a, a fault that's on the circuit. Right. I'm not, and I don't know if, if I answered the question properly or not. Okay. The only uh, time it would lock, the only time a breaker would lock out and you wouldn't be able to reset it is if its internal components um, have been compromised, then the breaker itself would lock out. But if you reset and turned on to an arc fault, it would just trip again. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. What conductor materials are the lugs rated for? They're rated for both copper and aluminum. It okay. is important. Yeah. To say, it is important to say, however, that if it's aluminum, you can only go up to 50 amps because it's a four um, four gauge. Are the breakers interchangeable? Uh, the breakers Leviton to Leviton are yes interchangeable, easily to easy to do. Um, but you cannot use another manufacturer's breakers on our panel just simply because of the the complete installation. Gotcha. Let's see. Scrolling through here. I think we've gotten to most most of the common questions here. This one just came in. Uh, can you comment on NEC 110.9 short circuit rating? Uh, I know it's pretty no. specific to the code. <laughs> <laughs> I know portions of it, but I'm not, a, I'd say probably most of the folks on this webinar uh, could name them off better than I can, but I, I can't answer that. Gotcha. Um, we can always follow up too. We can, we yeah, can yeah, probably. Yeah. I'll be glad to person. follow up. Yeah. Um, Oh, uh, this person clarified uh, that question's in regards to the breaker specifically. Does that help? The breaker, I assume it would be to the breaker. Um, you, you, the breakers themselves are rated at 10 kA. I, I, this might not be answering it, but they're, the branch, the branches are 10 kA. The main is 22 kA. And our panel as a whole it would be 22 because our branches are, are series rated to our main at 22. So that's the standard rating. Okay. They said, got it, good. <laughs> so I think, okay. I think you did good okay. job on that one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> next question. Um, is your EU SERC rated panel ring type or ringless? Um, USERC panels, I think I'm going to get this right, are always, they're one or the other. This is going through my head crazily. If somebody's on California, they would know. I believe they're always ringless <laughs> for USERC. Yeah, USERC. I, I don't, I, I know they're always one type. So USERC is, requires always one type, and I don't recall the top of my head if they're always ringless or ring type. But does it does it meet that? I guess that, that's a standard. Yeah, it meets USERC. It's a USERC. Yeah, we actually went to the USERC board, which is, a I think, a consortium of like 80 utilities. We had to go there and get approval. So it is a USERC approved product. Yeah. This person yep. commented again, it's ring type, so. Ring type, my okay. bad, my bad. <laughs> Sorry, we're, I'm we're just updating our line together. card. I just updated. I just updated our line card with all these different requirements, and uh, I'm sure many electricians that have to deal with the utilities. It's, it's a challenge um, of how many different variations there are out there. 
um, when it comes to meter mains and uh, all-in-one load centers. Great. Um, this next question is, um, do the GF and AF breakers um, work for multi-wire branch? Uh, no, I would not recommend uh, wiring a, a, a ground fault or an arc fault breaker on a um, on a you know shared neutral, I guess you could call it um, one of those circuits. I would. Uh, there are two pole AFCIs out there that uh, that are designed to work on those kind of systems. Uh, we don't have one as of today, but it's another thing on our roadmap. It's uh, and again, it's important to note the two pole AFCIs are not 240 volt rated. You can't use them on a, a like a dryer circuit, for example. They're only used. They're designed specifically for um, a two wire, you know, or a shared neutral, multi wire, multi wire, not two wire, multi wire circuit. Sorry. Gotcha. Um, okay. Next one. Uh, can you elaborate on the ground fault end of life thing? And are our AFCI's end of life? Um, and what makes your breakers better option for safety? Okay. Um, so again, so what happened, right, was was a few years back. It was really determined that people in the field do not test their ground fault interrupters, uh, be it receptacle or breaker type, monthly, as is recommended. Um, so the, the community, the manufacturers understood this, and they implemented basically what's called a self-test, and this was implemented in, by a UL in 2015. Uh, and basically, it does the test to make sure it's working. It doesn't have, you know, that, that there is no end of life. And if it finds out it's not, it's supposed to do a few things, you know, either trip and lock out or trip and be able to reset but then trip immediately or just do a, a, an indicator so uh, or just give an indication right which um, there's many discussions around this but um, so basically it's doing these tests and it is a basically it's a and i'm sorry these questions are popping up on my screen so I just need to look away. So in any case, there, it was determined there's seven ways that a GFCI can fail. Uh, and I don't want to jump into detail. It has to do with um, the sensing, which is, you know, a current transformer, and it has the, the brains, which is basically, you could say, a, a chip or a circuit, and then the way it trips, which is like the solenoid. So the, all these things, there's a bunch of features and a bunch of ways they can fail, and it was determined by you that there's really seven failure modes. And um, since GFCI receptacle types are continuously powered because they are inherently line side powered, they needed to pass all seven tests. And because historically breakers, electronics were always powered on the load side, they wouldn't know what was happening until you turned it back on. So a couple, and this has to do with two specific failure modes. And uh, breakers didn't have to, they had exemptions from these failure modes, but that was changed in the recent uh, revision of the standard. Uh, I hope that was good enough. Uh, AFCIs are not, as of today, um, self-testing. Uh, believe it or not, there, there's, it's, it's obviously happening. It's a similar idea. There's, there's proposals out there, but the, as of today, they are not self-testing. Uh, Leviton did, though, add um, a test to our AFCI. So if you turn it off to test it and reset it, you can, ours figures, finds out it cannot uh, pass all of those. It doesn't, if it has any of those seven failure modes, does it actually, it will not allow it to be turned on. So we did add that added layer of safety for AFCIs as well. So that's, I'd say, some of the two primarily mo primary modes that we've really added safety above and beyond what's required. Great. Um, any changes in regards to connection to TVSS in the panel? Uh, no, it's the, it's the same. Is It's the same. You would just probably you would tap it off a, a two-pole. Gotcha. Uh, what should we use a receptacle with, uh, GFCI, AFCI, or both in a panel? 
what should we use a receptacle with? I'm not sure I can answer that. I would guess, uh, I would say it's, it has to do with the NEC, you know, and I think any installation, you know, if you're in a certain area, then it's it's required to install a, an AFCI or a GFCI, you would, you would use a solution there. Gotcha. And that varies by municipality, state, certainly, and then even by municipality. And then there's even, I'd say at the back of the NEC, um, states have their own um, addendums to the NEC. So uh, it's one of those things that the, the, the electrician will have to know their their territory. Yeah, check the code that's there. Yeah, HK yeah. I mean, Maybe yeah. give them a call. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, can you explain again how the LEDs stay lit up when the bre breakers are tripped? Sure. So um, the way our LEDs stay lit up is because we have our uh, our line side electronics are powered by the line side. So you're you're always going to have power coming in from the line, right? So we actually tap off of that and keep our electronics awake. So that means we can keep our LEDs lit up. Great. Um, do these load centers have tandem breaker capability? Uh, no, we decided not against it. Uh, at this point, we see uh, as time progresses, um, the whole panel may be AFCI required. Uh, and if that's the case, there's physics dictate that you cannot do an AFCI in a half inch package. So tandem, two AFCIs and one inch wide product is, is just not really feasible. So we, we opted not to do tandem breakers. Gotcha. Let's see. Um, so um, the, the breakers are specifically t designed to work with the uh, load center, is that correct? The question is, are the GF and AF breakers rated to be installed in a NEMA 3R panel installed outdoors? Yeah, yep, you can install any of our breakers in any panel. Oh. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, it's gotta be 11. <laughs> yeah, 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 our 3R, the the distribution part of it, you know, the the, the branches, and they're, they're the same. Great. Let's see. Oh, uh, I guess uh, somebody wants to know if you guys have had any successful installations since their launch and, and where that might be. Uh, yeah, we've we've sold already thousands of panels uh, and uh, installed in in single families and in uh, multi-family. Um, basically, we're focusing right now on on the U.S. and Canada. So we've had them in both of those countries. I mean, really all over the place. Great. Um, I I feel like you may have hit, may may uh, have hit on this one, but um, I guess um, maybe just reiterate if you have uh, what ampacity and capacity load centers are available at this time. Okay. Uh, for load centers, no, I, I actually haven't yet. So right now oh. we're uh, we have three. Um, so we'll, I'll just focus on indoor and outdoor. Um, we have 20, 30, and 42 space uh, load centers, up to 225 amps max. So that's for the indoors and outdoors. And then uh, the USERC stuff is almost all 200 or 150, so we have those. And, and then as well as the, the meter mains. We've seen, you know, just looking at our sales, it's mostly in those. It's going to be, you're going to see 200 amp uh, installations. But, you know, when sometimes in the... Multi-family, you see 100 amps more. Great. All right. Well, um, it seems like we have come to the end of the questions that I'm seeing. Um, I'm just going to let you guys uh, consider it a little bit longer. If you have any other questions, we do have a little bit more time. So um, go ahead and, and shoot them over if, 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 you're, if you have any questions. Um, otherwise... We might be able to wrap it up. Okay. All right. Is there, is there any um, are there any final thoughts you want to add, Justin? Or uh, 
No, I mean, I just really appreciate um, everybody's time. It's been uh, an amazing uh, project here at Leviton. We really spent um, a lot of time up front to really solve customers' needs instead of starting with the product. So we took all these needs and said, okay, what are obvious ones and what are some of those unmet needs? Uh, and we started to really iterate the design. We, we actually went out in the field and observed and we filmed uh, hundreds of hours of installations at trim and rough, um, different areas, indoor, outdoor. So we did a ton of research, um, observations and interviews and all that kind of stuff. And then we actually started an advisory board, uh, which really helped us. And it was formulated of uh, seven electricians, two builders, one, uh, I'd say one production builder, one uh, custom builder and then a, even a developer that does uh, high rises. So we started talking to these folks and bringing these concepts to them that we had come up with and, and really started to iterate the design over time. Um, and, and it was just a lot of fun to, to go and, and they would say, you know, that's pretty neat and that's, that's silly. Um, try and tweak that a little bit. So we did that over multiple times. Uh, you know, we would meet in another few months, we would meet again. Um, do a quick webinars, and uh, ultimately we got to a point where we were ready to do our beta testing after we did our agency's stuff, and uh, we did that for a year. We wanted to make sure our product was bulletproof, uh, especially when it comes to the electronic breakers. Uh, we all know about those. So we, we really spent a lot of time up front to make sure, sure it was ready to go. So um, it's been a lot of a lot of fun. So we're really excited about it. Great. Um, well, we're really excited to, about it too um, over here at the magazine. Um, so, all right. Well, um, I guess with that, um, on behalf of of the magazine and and Leviton, I, I want to thank you guys for attending, um, and I want to thank thank you, Justin, for an excellent presentation. Um, I just want to remind everybody to be on the lookout for the recording of the event, um, which I will notify you about in an email as soon as possible. And I'm going to head. I'm going to go ahead and end the event.